In this video, we're going to talk about tracing your Jenkins pipelines using OpenTelemetry and Jaeger. You've noticed that a number of your jobs are starting to take longer to run than normal. You start thinking about, how can I trace this? Maybe I need to go in and modify my jobs and add in timestamps around each of my steps. But then you would realize that would be really painful to maintain over time. What if I told you that with one plugin and a couple of other systems, you could quickly start visualizing each run of your jobs and keep from having to do all of that manual work? As we go into this video, we're going to be using OpenTelemetry and Jaeger to help us trace and visualize our Jenkins pipelines. Here's where we're starting at today. I have a Jenkins controller running Jenkins LTS 2.289.2. Attached to that controller, I have an agent with the label of Linux. And finally, instead of setting up our own OpenTelemetry and Jaeger instances, what I'm going to be doing is use a sample application from the OpenTelemetry project to make that part of our setup simple. Not only does that demo application provide an open telemetry collector, but it also provides an instance of Jaeger for us to visualize the data captured. Down in the description of this video, there is a link to a gist that has the commands and documentations that we use in this video. To get started, we need to install one plugin, and that plugin is the open telemetry plugin. As we look at the documentation for this plugin, we can see through the introduction, it's meant to collect Jenkins monitoring data through OpenTelemetry. And the architecture that we're going to be using today is Jenkins into an OpenTelemetry collector and then sending the traces into Jaeger. In a previous video, we've talked about using Prometheus and Grafana, so we're not going to be talking about Prometheus in today's video. So let's go back over to our controller and let's install the plugin. So go to Manage Jenkins, Manage Plugins, we'll go to Available, and type Open Telemetry. And right now, at the time of recording, the version is 0.17. So let's go ahead and click on that check mark, download now and install after restart. And we can see here that this is just a standalone plugin, so no dependencies needed for this plugin. So while we're waiting for it to download, Okay, that's done. Let's go ahead and do a restart. So now that we've restarted our Jenkins instance, let's click on Manage Plugins and make sure that the plugin is installed. And the way that we're going to do that is through Configure System. And then we scroll down to Open Telemetry. Now we'll take a look at this in just a moment. Now, remember I said at the beginning of the video that we're using a demo application from the OpenTelemetry project to provide the OpenTelemetry collector and a Jaeger instance. So the link for this is included in the gist. But if we take a quick look at what we have here, this is the OpenTelemetry collector demo that is through the OpenTelemetry project. And it's just a very simple Docker Compose file that's there. And we can see here that this demo exposes the following backends. Jaeger, Zipkin, and Prometheus. The only one that we're using today is Jaeger. Well, let's go back over to our configuration and see what we have available. The first thing that we need to configure is our OLTP gRPC endpoint. And typically, that endpoint is listening on a 4317 port. However, in our Docker Compose, what we'll see is that it's not actually listening on 4317 externally. So let me open up a window here, and I'm going to do a docker compose ps. So these are all of the different containers that are running in this process right now. And what we will see is somewhere along here, we are going to see a 4317, which is right here. And the 4317 is actually mapping back to a 58215 on the outside. So instead of putting in the 4317 here, we're going to be putting in the 48215. Excuse me, the 58215. So let's do that. So the IP address of all of these containers that are running is 192.168.19. And let me go back over and grab the 58.215. And I have to remember to take that dash off the end. 
Okay, good. All right, so that is now going to map through and go to our 4317 on the inside of that running container. Okay, so that one's set up. Let's take a look what's left. So there's no authentication on this point, so we don't need to do any authentication. Now we need to add our visualization backend. And since we've already made the decision that we want to use Jaeger, now you can see here we could use Jaeger, Zipkin, some custom backend, or we could use the Elastic Observability. But today we're using Jaeger. So let's click on Jaeger. And our Jaeger base URL is going to be our 192.168.119, which is right there. And the port stays the same here in this case. The default port for Jaeger is 166.86. Okay. And that's all we, that we have to configure in our specific environment. So we set up our OLTP gRPC endpoint and we set up our Jaeger base URL. So let's go ahead and click on save. Next up, let's go ahead and create a test job. So we're going to say new item, test, and this is going to be a test pipeline. And the test pipeline that I'm going to run is right here. And in fact, this pipeline is copied from the OpenTelemetry plugin page. So I just copy and pasted, dropped it in here. Let's go ahead and click on save. Now you can see here before I click on save that at line seven, we're doing a run of Maven MVN. Now on my agent that's connected to this controller, I have Maven installed on a default path, so it's gonna be able to be picked up. So let's go ahead and click on build now, and let's see what happens here. Now it'll take a few moments for this job to run because there are no caches available on this agent. So basically we're gonna be downloading the internet as this Maven job is built. So give this a couple of minutes. Okay, our job finished up. That's great. Successful. So we ran the job once. We know it ran on agent one. In fact, we can verify that from our build log. So let's go back down here to one and take a look at our console output. And if we go to the full log, we'll see here at the top that it ran on agent one. So we know that's the Maven that was used. So now that we've run the job once, let's go over and take a look at our Jaeger dashboard. And that is going to be on, in my case, I can just do localhost. 16686. And this is the default Jaeger dashboard. We can see here Jaeger UI. And I'm going to click on select a service. And all of these services that are here are from that demo application that we saw, except for this Jenkins one. So let's go ahead and select Jenkins and click on find traces. And we can see here that Jenkins test was run once. In fact, it was run at 40920. And we take a look at it and we can see each part of our pipeline from a trace perspective. So we can see here that the whole pipeline took roughly 32 seconds. So let's figure out where most of it was happening. So if you get down and think about how the pipeline was built, we had a git clone. Well, the git clone only took about 8.47 seconds. Not too bad. And we take a look at the, the SH line where Maven was being run, and we can see that took 16 seconds. So between the 16 seconds and the eight seconds, by the time you add both of these up, we're talking about 25 seconds. So the overhead of the complete pipeline was probably about seven seconds, 32 minus 25. So we can see here at each part of this of how long each of these separate steps or stages took. But what happens if I run the job one more time? Let's go back over to our controller and let's run the job one more time. We would expect it to run faster because we have all of our Maven caches in place. So we can see last time it took about 32 seconds, but this time it took about four seconds. Okay, this is interesting. Let's go back over to our Jaeger UI. I'm gonna click on Jaeger UI here in the upper left. I'm going to click on find traces again. We still have Jenkins selected. And also notice you can look back last hour or last two hours or whatever you want to do there. But here we can see that at 4.12, a few seconds ago, this ran in 5.26 seconds compared to the first one of 32 seconds. Well, 
Let's take a look at that and figure out what took the time. In our get clone, that took about 700 milliseconds. Again, a lot faster because we'd already cloned into that workspace before. And if we take a look at our Maven run, that took about four seconds. And it took about a second for it to start up. So, what does this mean? Let's go back one more time. The other thing I can do is I can compare two traces. So if I compare that trace and that trace, so the five second one and the 32 second one, and I click on compare traces, then it compares from A to B. So we can see this was five seconds, this was the 32 second one, and it also visualizes the flow of how long each part of our pipeline took. So why use OpenTelemetry and Jaeger to monitor Jenkins? By using the OpenTelemetry plugin, it eliminates the manual work that you would need to do as a job author to instrument each of your jobs in order to produce the telemetry data that's necessary for determining how long each of your steps or stages are running. Secondly, both OpenTelemetry and Jaeger are part of the CNCF. Jaeger is already a graduated project, and although OpenTelemetry is still a sandbox project, it has broad support from cloud providers, vendors, and end users. And finally, the visualizations within Jaeger can give you the insights on how your pipelines are actually running and could provide hints on how to rewrite your pipelines in order to optimize their performance. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on the subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.